All right. Uh, yep. Sorry, I'm sharing my screen. What the heck? Where the hell do I share? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Timing yep. start. Okay. Yep. So this is a uh, Sense China Limited. Basically, in short, this is a casino company, lah. Uh, this. Is our, yeah. Yeah. We've been talking about casino always, right? So. No. Let's take a look. Since we keep talking about casino. Since since we went to Genting. <laughs> yeah. the, the stock market really is like casino right now, so la, same la. Really, really. Okay, ready <laughs> now. Huh? So, so what is this about? Um, you know, re uh, quite recently, presidency uh, hits on the corruption. Uh, that was uh, that was started in two thousand thirteen. So, casino casino gaming revenue actually take a sink. Do, 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 do. So now it slowly rise back up. So why? why this why this rise back up is because of Chinese tourists. Oh, I thought because they corruption again. Uh no, it's still Chinese tourists. I mean, presidency is also hitting Chinese tourists, ma. And ever since uh during that few years, right, Chinese tourists sink. Much less Chinese tourists come. Uh, and uh, you know, but then after a few years, then they improve. Uh, it comes back again. Oh. So this is uh, the tourist arrival uh, in Macau. Mm. Okay, a little bit sink here, then do, 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 go up. All right. So it's still mainly contributed by China, despite there are many nations that comes. You know, they are uh, Hong Kong, they are Taiwan, they are US, they are Philippines, whatever. Mainly still from China lah. China is the one that driving the tourist arrival and hence the revenue for these companies. Okay, so it's basically rising on the trend of uh China increasing uh, medium income yeah okay all right so this is some intro uh, Macau is heavily reliant on tax income from casino operators um, but ever since the crackdown from presidency instead of focusing on just gaming and casino and the VIP people right I think previously Richard shared some uh, insights on you know how to get these VIP, VIP customers some promoters you know get some flights or bus or or ferry just to get them to the casino spend the money and win or lose whatever lah. because by certain rules the more you play the more the house gain actually probability anyway so yeah they want them to come and spend lah. right so <clears throat> since the initial crackdown vip decline they now move to more mass market entertainment and tourism right so uh, recent developments such as this uh, highway also helps uh, to bring in more traffic to Macau. Okay. Uh, yeah. So gaming revenue uh, sink. And, uh, the red line is actually the market share by revenue lah, of this company. Yeah, just a straightforward one. Uh, <coughs> can actually extract this data and then from revenue and then just compare lah. so i compare only two i'm still actually extracting the rest i found since china is still slightly ahead of the competitors in terms of market share lah, by revenue okay so that's the industry overall this is a snapshot of the tax income in the macau city government revenue is for example 134 sorry uh 134 billion uh macau dollar from the gaming sector itself is already 113 billion right that shows how significant is the gaming uh, revenue to to the government of macau still right it's just that now instead of focusing on vip they shift to mass market mass market would be customers like us okay so in overall structure how does the gaming concession in Macau works? Basically, you have only few players, and this is the limiting factor, lah. Unless government want to issue more license, so to be a gamer there, you need license. So they have six players now, All right? Only these six players in Macau. Okay. So we zoom into this sense China. So as usual, the main part comes from gaming. And then they have hotel, they have uh, uh, meetings, incentive, and conference hall. Lah. 
retail segment, which is the mall, the shopping mall that you see in Genting, entertainment, uh, you know, some of the theme parks and so on and so forth, and own transportation. They have a uh, ferry, they have a mm -hmm. uh, limo, they have a uh, shuttle bus, um, even jet planes for VIP. <laughs> All right. Um, and travel agencies to end those whatever ticket booking. And of course, membership. You know that from printing membership, right? So it's the same here. Okay. So what is the highlight points here in the operating data is just showing the, the interrelationship between the casino, the hotel rooms taking, and the ferry. So you can see that people mainly come to St. China for gambling and stay for gambling if they do. So, <clears throat> where is this Sense China? Is it in this the Macau map? That is the highway from Zhuhai, China side. That's the highway from Hong Kong. And that's the bridge from another side of China. So, it's just showing the convenience of getting to Macau from China nowadays, right? It's even more convenient now that they have opened this uh, Zhuhai uh, bridge. Okay. And that's where they are, the orange box. Okay. So, so every year, regardless of which company, they have to pay to Macau government to let, uh, lease the land. And similarly, like in China, uh, over here, they have a land lease of uh, by default 50 years. And uh, every 50 years, they have to renew. Lah. And every five years, Macau government would revise their land cost law. Right. So what are the few capex that they would always need to spend on? Right. That would be like, you know, maintaining their hotels, build new hotels and with new teams. So how do these, uh, these players actually attract people to, to visit them, to spend in their, you know, to play the gaming in their place, to stay in their hotel, and so and so forth is by uh, getting into some attractive theme, fresh theme for their hotel. So this definitely costs their money to even maintain, right? So it's a part of their maintenance capex uh, to actually uh, maintain this uh, theme, uh, maintain the uh, the uh, property well, so that people could find it attractive and come back instead of going to their competitors, you know, there are six players in Macau for gaming. So these are just uh, some histories of their development. Okay. And yeah. So how do they plan to grow? Well, basically they're just saying that they plan to uh, penetrate more into the mass market, uh, offering more luxury suits, uh, more of this uh, uh, meeting room, conference space, retail and Instant offerings, basically mass market instead of all <laughs> right. So some of the things that uh, this business could run into, the risk would be uh, the um, what you call failure to meet deadlines in the construction projects. Uh, that could lead to them uh, impair some PPE because they prepared those equipment, but uh, government eventually uh, do not approve the project. <laughs> Or uh, do not allow extension of project means you cannot mean means even though after you finish building it you cannot operate the thing. Yeah, what is this to impairment? Uh, sorry, Daniel. How long? For? I need to interrupt. Uh, actually, your you want me to do the minutes? It's just those Q and A questions, right? Um. Well, normally what I would do is that for minutes is the key points uh, of the presentations and Q and A. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but but I guess in this case you can just do the Q and A because uh, a lot of things are in the Word doc. Yeah. yeah because I actually also haven't time anything yet. Yeah, it's anything. Eh, yeah. I don't know how how the minutes should. Okay, never mind. You continue lah. Uh. Format one. Uh. Format one. Uh. Okay, continue. Okay, I continue. All right. So, yeah, business risk, uh, PP impairment, uh. This part is just uh, showing the, the, what you call, the demand side. 
uh, quite related to tourism, consumer and corporate spending. Right. Okay, Daniel, five more minutes. Huh? Oh, shit. That was quick. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess you can take all this from the uh, Word file that I have uploaded in the Google Drive. What else to... Okay. Important thing to take note is the Chinese and Macau government regulations. We have seen the effect by having China government to ban on the uh, this uh, corruption that affect the VIP customer, customers' uh, count. So, so uh, and gambling itself is uh, what you call quite tight, uh, quite tightly regulated by the Macau government. Uh. So, so yep, there's a certain sensitivity to that. Okay. Okay, on the management side, <clears throat> the key thing is to know these two people. Uh, one is the executive, uh, this is actually the COO. The other one is from non-executive become executive and he's the controlling shareholder. So it's quite a, it's quite a uh, powerful people uh, actually from US. Okay, and uh, yeah. And basically, he's a controlling shareholder. Okay. So on paper, right, their committee seems to be allocated quite fairly, you know, uh, basically having uh, sufficient independent people and uh, executive uh, directors are not in the committee, committees for audit, remuneration, nomination, and capex. But if you look at the shareholder structure, right, you will have different thinking. Okay, this still looks okay, but look at this one. Shareholder by the category. Vanity Venture Development Intermediate 2. This 70%, right, is by a single person. And this single person is the chairman itself. All right. That's why he is a controlling shareholder. So what happens as a controlling shareholder holding 70%? Basically, it means you say what, I do what. Lah. Okay. So he's also very good. He didn't take much uh, remuneration from here directly. He takes it from the master holding company. Okay, so the controlling shareholder controls this uh, uh, sense China through a master holding company called LVS. Okay, so of course he's a controlling shareholder. That's why they monitor the remuneration quite strict. Okay, but you will find a lot of these uh, related party transactions, which is a uh, concern. Concern in a sense where uh, it could lead to uh, a very high fixed cost for this company. Okay. For example, one of it, it would be the license agreement. So what this is about, this is about Sense China uh, Limited uh, borrowing the uh, brand, the Sense name from this uh, LVS, I mean, some of their brands uh, to uh, operate and to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to operate and earn. Uh. So, LVS charge a license royalty fee la, to this uh, company in Sense China. But although they set a limit to this licensing fee, that means no matter how much they increase, there is a limit. The limit increased 20% per year, regardless of the performance of the company. Okay, Means every year they will increase la, and expect a royalty fee to just increase perpetually. La. Okay. <clears throat> Concern. Okay, financial side. A uh, few more concerns is trade receivables. Trade receivables are what? I mean, normally if you come to casino, it's normally cash, right? I mean, you pay cash, you get the chips, and then you go out. Very hardly you get into credit. Mm, this credit I extended to selected people, the IPs, and some of the uh, frequent, uh, frequent uh, gamers. So frequent gamers can also be losers. Okay, one so more minute. So why wouldn't they have the losers? They would not pay back the money lah, they own. Yeah. So what happens is that you can see that the impact for trade receivables, right, the percentage is about 30%. So basically, what I see in the trade receivables here, I minus 30% lah, every year. Okay. That's the amount that they have impact in general. Right. So it could be normal in the casino industry. That is something that I yet to find out. Right? Fine, that is just one of the concerns. But a very big highlight for me is this royalty fee. 
this becomes an increasing uh, fixed cost for this company. Should this company not performing well, it will just be eaten up by this uh, fixed cost and the company would have to, you know, borrow to pay and something. Okay, royalty fee. I've already highlighted this just now. This is just a graph to show that the blue line is the revenue and this one is, of course, the royalty fee. It is regardless of how the revenue is going, royalty fee increases and that is for sure. And this <coughs> it goes to controlling shareholder. Dividend. Uh, another concern is on dividend. So every year, uh, never fail to issue dividend since financial 2012. And who's the beneficial? I guess it will be controlling shareholder. He holds 70%. He gets dividend from here. He gets dividend from other company. He makes sure he gain. Lah. Okay. So uh, conclusion so far. Well, the business is rising on the trend of this uh, rising medium income and uh, uh, medium income group in China, which is uh, attractive. Um, uh, and it's casino. As long as it's legalized, uh, well, you get tons of cash comes in and it's cash transactions. All right. Uh, I can show you the, the financial seat that uh, they actually hold uh, what you are. The cash conversion cycle is actually negative. And it's common among uh, among casino because they they almost instantly receive the cash, but they can pay the supplier like one or two months or even three months later. Okay. So so the con the, the 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 unlike what we saw in Paycom, Paycom did uh, generate something from this flood. Uh, unfortunately for casino, they don't. I don't know whether it's because of regulation or because they want to keep the cash and they couldn't foresee when this customer will come back and redeem the cash. Redeem the cash in a sense where they put back their chip to this casino and then get the cash back. In this sense. So the casino always have to prepare the cash uh, on standby, right? So that could be one reason. But still, the concern that I see for this company is the shareholding structure. The shareholding structure is structured in a sense that the controlling shareholder, uh, or put it in another way, this company is a pet for the controlling shareholder. It can be seen in that way because if you look at how uh, they charge the royalty fee. If you look at how they continue to distribute the dividend and how the debt builds up just to pay the dividend, I mean, uh, it, it's just uh, telling me that uh, I don't care what's minority shareholders as long as I'm the controlling shareholder and I'm earning and I make sure that I earn. So in worst case, I just sub off this company and I go to somewhere else. Uh, right. So there's a big concern there. Right. So moving forwards, uh, it would be... Uh, I, I should say that this uh, casino business is still attractive in can, in the sense where it's a uh, is a uh, is a uh, cash business and riding rising uh, riding on the trend of this immediate income, but uh, very likely I will need to look at alternative company that has a more uh, minority shareholder friendly structure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Any questions? Okay, seven minutes Q and A. Okay, it's agent here. Agent here, right? Oh, okay. Is there any potential candidate for succession planning? Succession planning? No. No family members in the the board or the management team. Mm, no. <laughs> Apparently, it's only about this guy. He's uh, eighty-five year old. Huh? Yes, and <laughs> he's a powerful guy, and he's currently sick. Yeah. Oh no. Five years young. <laughs> yeah. It's still young uh, as compared to our PM anyway. So yeah. Uh, eight more years to go. <laughs> yeah. 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 So apparently this company also have a switch in their CEO and CFO together, uh, like in 2014. That's also when the company uh, revenue goes down because of this uh uh, VIP sweep by president, president C. I'm not sure if they went out because of their, you know, they get too much of VIP in and then scared too, uh, scared, you know, kind of caught by president C or something. Lah. I don't know. Lah. But that's when they quit. And I don't think he's not even a Chinese. Eh? Yeah, Shelton Gary Anderson, you mean? Yeah, he's not a Chinese. He's a US fellow. Yeah. 
operating in China. Wow, okay. No. Well, like, wait, wait, is he based? Is he based in US or is he based in China? He's based in US and he has a casino also in Las Vegas. Oh, called... yeah, casino. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. I mean, this, Darren, mm. this is the same one that has Marina Bay Sands. Lah. Yes. Yes. Mm. It's right, the same right, casino. Right. Same, it's same, same one. So same if he dies, the, the three, three, triple tower will fall down. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy is a powerful guy la. he's a uh, you know a republican member close to uh, somewhat close to Trump and then largest donor to Trump some more uh, guy I mean quite a history uh, you can look at the Wikipedia some controversial history you can silence the news one this guy really you can silence the news one he just say one word I bosong your your publication uh. next few days uh, the news uh Editor or the news boss, uh, uh, apologize publicly. One, <laughs> mm. I mean, that's just a show of strength, lah. Of how he is. Anyway, so that further <coughs> confirms that he's the controlling shareholder instead of the rest. Basically, he just say, "I want this." The poll have to say yes. <coughs> Pablo, Pablo Escobar. Yeah, but that's the structure for this company. There's uh. In terms of business wise, uh, there may be there may be a, a slight destruction due to you know trade war or something, but but I don't think that would be so significant that uh, that uh, people won't come back for gambling like for you and me. I mean, we also consider get, uh, going to Genting once a while. There was no, Sorry? No, nothing. <clears throat> that was just a suggestion. <laughs> anyway, any questions? Um, no. Then any comments? Mm. <clears throat> Hwan Yang, you got a lot of comments, man. I think yeah, you should ask Agent to comment. He can look. Adrian, any comment? What's the current share price? Sir? Not too much. Actually, if you want me to look at casino, I will only look at once, uh, but I missed the company already, uh, so I, I won't look casino. <laughs> okay. 37.15. Yep. Can you put up the max trend? I want to see the... Overall. Wait, uh, why, why you say you don't look at casino? Uh? Okay. It's when the corruption sweep. Uh. Every casino will have this uh, downtrend one. <coughs> <Not count. coughs> yeah, because it's a gaming business, right? Yeah. Uh, you sweep and then you put down. So a bit cyclical sometimes, ah. Uh. Economy yes. good, more people play. Economy not good, less people play. Yeah. How many? How many biggest risk is regulation risk for us? Yeah, don't. And Darren is right. It's somewhat cyclical in the sense of uh, in this in that sense. And now, as it targets the mass market, it's more prone to also tourism as well. So tourist uh, arrival less, then of course the whole thing will be less. Mm. That's the one. All right. Okay. Uh, <coughs> oh, uh, next company. Mm. Um, next company we have uh, I know we have magic software and we have this uh, bright should we look at magic software okay all right okay uh, it better be magical ha 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 wait a skip skip <laughs> I have Screen. Okay. Yellow screen. Oh, there is. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh. The screen so yellow. One. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I thought it's <laughs> at first is you know like uh issue with Microsoft or something like that. But 
very strangely right now, even as, as I share screen also, it's yellow. Very strange. I don't know why. Can you go to the <laughs> bottom right and then there's a notification square and then you click and then there is a pop-up that shows a few buttons and then on the button you can click on night light. I, I did already. I okay. unclick and click still the same. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go very, very fast because there's quite a fair bit of content. And then uh, potentially if we have time, I'd like to show two short video or, or <laughs> one, minute, one minute duration. <clears throat> so uh, it is, uh, <clears throat> I, I term it as a fairly small tech company in terms of uh, its share pricing right now. So maybe I, I show you a bit of the, the share pricing trend and history. Uh, nice, nice, nice. Miss can that X one. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So this is how the, the share pricing looks like. <clears throat> there was a period of time Whoa. where it was high up to like $30, right? But, it can uh, already, yeah. right? Then now it's going going out in on a increasing track, uh, increasing trend uh. So this is something that uh kind of like makes me feel it's a bit interesting also. Uh, and then okay, coming back. Uh, so right now it's only trading at around about nine dollar plus USD. Uh, is uh and but it has a lot of big names in its client. How this later, later I'll go, uh, show you the list. Uh, and then uh my my investment thesis the the one statement is that if it's rightfully positioned in the tech boom, uh, it may have a lot of growth potential in it. Lah. So anyway, um, going through this, uh, the basic stuff, $9 <coughs> plus, uh, market cap for or close to half a million, P ratio 23 is a tech industry, more than 2,000 uh, employee. Uh, now it's already in 50 plus country, but uh, a lot of the presence are like small presence, so it's not like huge presence in all those countries. Mm -hmm. 24 global offices, uh, 1,300 plus global partners, millions of users worldwide. <clears throat> and business model, basically, <clears throat> um, it is a proprietary app development company that uh, focuses a lot on the business process integration. It has a lot of... Uh, uh, basically, there's four main product that they uh, uh, what do you call this uh, featuring. Uh, so maybe I, I show you also how the website looks like. Uh, but, so the main the main thing uh, as you can see over here, these are the main product one, two, uh, three. Yeah, three main product, and then there are some subcategories lah. Uh, and then they are present in you know all this uh, industry: finance, healthcare, manufacturing, retail. Okay, right back. <clears throat> uh, and then in terms of, let's see, uh, I'm going to jump a little bit here and there. Uh, in terms of this one. Okay, I'm going to use this. Uh, yeah, let me adjust a little bit. So over a period of nine years, they have 25 acquisitions. Uh, and then they have global presence, 48% uh, North America, 37% Israel. So a lot of the founding members are actually from Israel. <clears throat> then 10% uh, Europe, 5% uh, in, uh, I can't remember why it's ROW already. <laughs> anyway, rest of, uh, rest of, sorry? If not, we're sitting in rest of world. Oh, rest of the world. Eh? Here it says APEC and South Africa. Lah. APEC and South Africa. So the mission is to become a preferred vendor of digital transformation market, providing wide range of top technology methodologies. Value proposition. Uh, they basically want help a lot of the large businesses to integrate a lot of their functions and processes, arranging all the way from finance, bidding all the way to sales. Lah. Uh, and then let's see best technology 35 years uh just want to very quickly show you also the global customer base has a lot of big names like bmp paribas microsoft in fact they are also labeled as a gold partner of uh, microsoft <coughs> uh nintendo nepresso <clears throat> you know uh what else let's see a lot of big names like coca-cola uh, actually, there's a list and hard list in my other other presentation later I'm going to show you. But I'm going to run through very quickly this document first. The strategy, uh, develop new proprietary technology, grow existing customer, win new customer, leverage strategic partnership, and leverage on new acquisition. So they have done a lot, a lot of acquisitions. 
overall they have 36 subsidiaries uh, and then every subsidiary has a, a very special uh, technical know-how in a certain area this one is a 2009 to 2018 acquisition record basically the feel that i get from it is they are trying to build like end-to-end <clears throat> capability in tech and uh well, whichever that is trending that's important right they'll very quickly go and identify a, a, a suitable partner and then they will acquire to uh, build integrate into the the larger business model uh financial highlight i'm just gonna let you uh you know eyeball very quickly kager 18 percent from 2012 to 2018 uh, growth profit, uh, 16%. Uh, business model, currently the segment is over here, 2018 and 2019. Technology is 25%, innovation 30%, IT services 45%. 2019, uh, pretty much the same. Geographic presence, 36% Israel, 11% Europe, but drop uh, in 2019 uh, at 8%, and increase in to 2% at uh, Israel, 38% in total, and 48% in USA, rest of the world 6%. Strong cash flow, 201 to 2018, increased to 39, close to 40 mil. This one is uh, 2018 to 2019's uh, net cash position. <clears throat> Why them, you know, proven strategy, did uh, double digit organic growth, m &A, uh, with m &A to accelerate, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pull this away. Coming back to this, uh, this, this PowerPoint presentation again. So they have uh, four main app uh, platform. Uh, funny names, Magic XPA, App Builder, Magic XPI, uh, so on and so forth. So this is where uh, I will show you two very quick video. Uh, wait, uh, uh, don't know whether you can hear the sound, but it's on YouTube. Okay. Okay. Let me know if you can hear the sound. Can you hear the sound? No. No. Can't hear anything. Sorry? Can't hear anything. Can't, can't hear anything. Hear anything. How do I do this? Uh this is always my struggle. Okay, never mind. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah, right? Okay. Uh, uh I think still, still no sound. Still no sound. Still no sound. <coughs> uh, but can we read the subtitle only? Can read a subtitle. Okay. Nice to for fifteen minutes. Yeah, no way for selling for me. You were saying something just now, Richard? No, I say what I know is the selling point already. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so they have a lot of these small, small, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, funny name products, uh, but basically they targeted at, <clears throat> uh, you know, all the business function and give end-to-end -end, 
uh, you know, this simplification of uh, your, your, your to simplification and control of your business. Uh, I'm going to go through very quickly what I have over here. We have, uh, they have 36 uh, active wholly owned subsidiaries in the United States, uh, Israel, Europe, Asia, and South Africa. 20 are engaged in developing, marketing, and supporting vertical applications, as well as selling and supporting the product. 16 subsidiaries specialize in providing broad range of IT consulting and outsourcing services, infrastructure design, delivery, so on and so forth. Okay, <clears throat> uh, major projects that they've done, I just want to highlight a few. They have presence in finance, logistic, HR, and me media, and healthcare. So for example, like uh, in healthcare, basically what they did is design and management, patient file oriented software solution for managed care, large scale healthcare provider, uh, allow them to securely access individual electronic health record point of care and the organizers proactively delivers information, potentially real time feedback and meet the specific needs of physicians, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Yeah, so depending on the business model and the business uh, that they are addressing, uh, what they want is to aim to achieve is cost effective, rapid delivery integration. Uh, the platform is very scalable, agnostic of uh, the business or agnostic for existing platform that the business is using. They can even develop into mobile applications, a uh, variety of smartphone, cloud, cloud software, and they, are, uh, they have global presence in terms of their network for direct sales representatives and also uh, other sales channels. Uh, where was it again? Uh, yeah, anyway, the product, just very quickly, you know, just now I, I think the video showed you pretty much what it's about already. One centralized platform, process autom automation, simplified future-proof solution, uh, code free. Yeah, so this is one of those things that they, they stress that uh, is, is quite easy. Their platform allows uh, drag and drop graphical uh, integration, IT pros, analysts in the company can easily integrate flows without any development background. <clears throat> Visual data mapper and manage and monitor. I think this one, uh, who is that? Uh, Richard, you may know better uh, since tech it was your, your ex industry mm -hmm. before, right? Yeah, so uh, the second main product that uh, they also feature is uh, something for you to gain control of your factory, optimize business, pain, painless implementation. Their principle is simplicity, business focus, comprehensive automation uh, of mundane, sorry, of mundane tasks and interoperability. Uh, they, uh, so a few examples are some of these companies that they work with. Uh, I like to highlight, you know, I mean, healthcare, maybe I'm biased. Uh, so pharmacy operate more than 300 dispensing pharmacy across Japan. And what they did is they synchronize data uh, and then they create this uh, automation software on cloud proprietary with CIN develop uh, to, to help them manage their operations. So uh, yeah, anyway, the strategy expand sales or just now I already mentioned. Yeah, so this is a list of all the thousands of customers that they have, uh, some of which uh, the big names, this one over here, there's Adidas, uh, BMP Paribas, Coca-Cola, so on and so forth. Guardian Life is also over here. GE Capital is here, uh, some banks. So quite quite a long list of clientele. Lah. <clears throat> uh, sub, this is a list of subsidiaries. Uh, mostly is uh, fully owned, only a, a handful of them are uh, like, um, uh, not fully owned, but I like to stress that uh, over here, some of the companies are like uh, almost 100% on certain businesses, uh, meaning like one, uh, there are subsidiaries where one subsidiary is focused only on one full business, that kind of uh, situation. Lah. I think they, they spin off a se separate entity to manage the overall business. <clears throat> uh, so some important questions to ask. Uh, past successful strategy, uh, my opinion after going through the company is that they build a lot of small teams that is highly penetrative, but they understand the customer's needs very uh, clearly and very uh, in, in depth. Uh, successful, past successful strategy, uh, but highly competitive. Uh, and then in terms of recent management to expand in the next three or five years, uh, it's, it's just in the, in the strategy where it continue to deepen uh, more opportunities with existing clients and continue to uh, use 
M&A uh, by acquiring new uh, tech companies with, uh, to write on new trends, new capability, and to leverage on, on their existing clientele while they work on bringing in new ones. Uh, honestly, when I go through the entire annual report, they don't sound very confident, but I think I can understand that uh, right now, they are pretty conservative, uh, maybe because as you look at the share price, they used to be so high and then after that, they go through tough times, right? But in the last, uh, how many years already? Yeah? Let's see, in the last, since 2001, they have been growing on a uh, on an increasing trend until 2018. Lah. So that's something that um, helps, uh, that comforts me about this company. Uh, much better than Patson, I think. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, then uh, X Factor, this company uh, has acquired a lot of uh, technical know-how in terms of all the, the subsidiaries that they're brought together. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, to me, it's still fairly small and still growing, has a lot of uh, opportunity if they're right on the correct trend wave. Yeah, and Risk Factor is the uh, management team went through tough times before, very conservative now, or enough for growth is com competitive, <coughs> changing easily disrupted because it's tech tech. La anything can happen dependency on key customer <coughs> uh one of five largest customer accounted for aggregate 18 and 27 percent of their revenue in year and and the uh, yeah five more minutes uh? five minute, okay then i better yeah. pass pass to uh who's that your q a time ready uh, okay uh who's that uh Hongi, okay you take over first yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Bye -bye. okay. Uh, here comes my string. Can you see? Uh? Okay. Uh, this one just now, Darren will show regarding their subsidiary, the whole list here, and also the whole hey, wait, list. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay. Your wait. screen sharing. <laughs> oh, now sharing. Go down, go down, go down. Go down. Anna? Don't tension, uh. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. So for management, this one, uh, Darren just not really show subsidiary list and then the customer list. Skip. Okay. Mm. Uh. Okay. Shareholding. Major shareholder. Currently, the major show is under Formula System. Uh, this is was another company. Uh. Okay. Uh, basically, for management, they didn't hold much of share. Uh, more all of them is under one. Uh, less than one percent. But one thing to uh, highlight, the CEO itself, the CEO for Magic Software, actually own 13.4% of the alternate share of Formula System, which is the biggest shareholder of Magic Software. So indirectly, he also have a direct interest on that. Okay, so Formula System also is a real company to trade on NASDAQ as well. I only for the seven point one two percent of magic out uh, ordinary shares. <coughs> then it was another boss up from Formula System by SS Law, another Polish company listed in Warsaw stock under in the country of Poland. Okay, so therefore based on the foregoing beneficial ownership by each of the formula and assessor, uh actually they can say directly or indirectly controlling magic software. Okay. Management, uh this guy is the one that holding the quite of quite a number of ordinary share in the formula. Uh, three of them nothing much special. Uh, all holding accounting degree. Uh, okay, one thing I find common in them, you see the right word. They are actually graduated from the same university, which I'm not sure whether do they have any direct relationship between each other. Maybe it's a friend or classmate or anything. So surprisingly, three of them are some from the same university, or maybe in Israel only one university. That might be the cost. Okay, moving on. Okay, this one uh, remuneration about six percent. Okay, uh, in their financial report, they didn't show the full list of the remuneration because of their own country laws, this and that. So they are not required to disclose. So they will just give you a lump sum for all the management and directors. This will be the total amount about. <coughs> About four million, four million, yeah, USD, and they are only uh, surprisingly they also show the top five person that getting the most remuneration, which the CEO is not inside the list. There's something quite weird to me. 
financial okay uh numbers wise uh there's more some comment here uh profit margin decreasing slowly despite always there's a growing revenue uh good thing about sgi uh expenses also decreasing uh bad thing uh mpit percentage from double digit drop to single digit after 2013 uh ccc increasing does it mean that they are getting cash slower than before and quarterly funding dropped to 1.03 last year. Okay. Uh, you can have much revenue or increase, growth process increase, a bit or no issues. Retail earning for negative, become positive, positive. Mm, okay. Uh, some other comment, uh, some build number inside financial data. Okay. Uh, they are consulting service segment in revenue increased quite drastically in 2017. Then EBIT limited change despite there's a 30 million increase in revenue because uh, uh, when their revenue increase, the cost of goods also increase about the same amount. Which like which means they are increased 30 million in revenue, they also increased 30 million in overall cost. Uh MPT limited higher tax paid and higher expense in SGA. Okay. Uh NTA increased in 214 and dropped quite large amount in 216, then again height in 2018. So these are some of the reason. Uh huge in cash and cash equivalent due to share issuance. Then in 2016, intangible and goodwill increased by 51 million uh due to the acquisition along the year. Then 2018 another share issuance. Okay. Goodwill when just now when I mentioned two of the big company uh the two acquisition that increased a uh, quite some number. Okay uh they also increasing in short term than 216 but uh, go down the information whether it is for the purpose of acquisition, which I think most likely it will be. Okay, that's it. Done. Any questions? I'm finished. <coughs> no question. No question. Anything? Oh. Get you attracted. Yeah, uh, that's the thing I would like to know is that... Uh... This company going forward, uh, sorry, I just don't know much about attack. So this company going forwards, uh, is there any, uh, you know, catalyst that you see that that would potentially uh, project this company to grow even further? Yeah. So <clears throat> my opinion is that uh, because tech is so ever changing right and and yeah. things can change like so quickly in five years and according to <laughs> the management's um perspective which they release on their website uh in terms of what uh, what, what you call that like uh news in the next five years right they they even predict stuff like uh, they cannot even uh fathom the role of uh new tech that will continue to change but <clears throat> they <clears throat> if if you look at their management team that this one guy who is in charge of uh r d and then uh that guy has like 20 30, i can't remember like 20 30 years of uh, experience in in r d and then uh they they commented quite a fair bit about stuff like uh, moving forward it's not even about project management it's about product management you know it's it's there's gonna be new product that uh, the market cannot even imagine stuff like that lah. so yeah so my, my opinion is that uh, this kind of company if they write on some waves uh, uh, it will bring it up lah. but if there's no new waves to write on right then you know uh, they just keep doing what they do lah. <clears throat> one thing concerns me yeah uh, and correct correct me if i'm wrong because currently i look at their uh revenue percentage actually most of it is come from the consulting services which means uh highly is because when the source of this business then they take consultation and then sell them the software platform to the company itself so is it means that they have very low recurring revenue because i see the software application revenue is quite just very low percentage like 10 to 20 percent of oh, overall so, revenue so i read <clears throat> somewhere in the report they every time <clears throat> when they bring on board a new client or a new product onboarding mm -hmm. right the so-called contract that they sign right is uh usually 
uh, if I remember correctly, it's like a couple of years only, like around two or three years or usually less than five years. That is where the recurring will stop. <clears throat> and even one of the, the main contract that they have, they did publish in their annual report saying that the, the contract is ending by uh, 202, end of 2020 or something like that. So this is this is where they have this challenge law. The duration of the contract is uh, typically not very, very long. Only Means they of, have to always source for new business. Uh, not to say new business, but what they do is they will, uh, part of the strategy ma, is to continue mm -hmm. work on their, their existing, uh, what do you call this, uh, business, uh, existing Create new platform and sell again. Uh. Not, not new platform. Eh. They like make adjustment and then they go and uh, modify <clears throat> based on the new capability that they acquire. <clears throat> you know, you, you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, means they <coughs> do some update, they charge again. Yeah, something like that. They modify on existing uh, product and then they go and change and then they, they, they uh, charge a fee from there. Yeah, yeah, correct. Renew. Renew the contract with with the existing customer, law. so the challenge also is to continue renew with them. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions from the ground? No. Shall we go to next? One last question. One last question. Mm. Uh, just a further on those uh, questions that we asked just now. Um, I wonder if uh, if they share any um, you know, recurring customer, or uh, that means uh, you know of any customer that uh, has uh, continually subscribed to this uh, magic software, or they subscribe the first five years or so, and then that's it. Uh, that one I'm not too sure, but <clears throat> I know for a fact that. Uh, Microsoft is one of their customer base and they also end up becoming a goal, goal level partner with Microsoft. So <clears throat> it's like uh, they are their customer and at the same time, they're also their partner. So Microsoft is one big name. Lah. After, apart from that, they also have uh, like Airline Lux Air, uh, Vodafone, uh, Nintendo, Nespresso, Coca-Cola, Boston Medical, the World Bank, stuff like that. <clears throat> And I believe this kind of big client, unlikely they will change to a new platform. Yeah, it's very difficult for them to change mm. because uh, the migration is massive. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, remember I mentioned they also have uh, uh, integration in terms of SAP, stuff like that, right? So that one is really uh, once you change, your, well, a lot of your billing can entirely go wrong. I, I speak from experience in Fullerton and when we use one uh, IT vendor, right? Uh, that's why last time we use externally, then we learn we don't want to use externally, we build in-house. But the, the process of building in-house until today is still back to square one and then still rebuilding. <laughs> so yeah, so this is uh, this is my own observation. Lah. Not easy to build in-house also. <clears throat> One of these uh, SAP software change usually take a number of years, not just one year. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. We can move on. Next. Brian, write something. Yeah. Next, Next one, one that, that, that I know, know of is, is the Bright, uh, uh, Bright, <coughs> Bright Horizon. Horizon. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, the yeah, other yeah. two. Hold on. Okay. Right, horizon. Okay. Uh, I start now. So this company is, as we know, is education. Uh, they are leading provider of high quality childcare, and they listed for quite long already. So. Okay, to move on, why we wanted to look at this because of attracted to its business model structure because it's, uh, the customers are basically the parents, <coughs> and, which is a company, they all claim from the company, uh, more, more like this. 
Okay, so their revenue model, they have three type, uh, service center. Uh, so this contract is multi years, so it takes up three to ten years of, like, uh, very steady income uh. So they are, they don't pay like, uh, like per year basis. It's more like, one every month only the parent will pay. So the backup care, uh, basically is daycare, babysit, or they also try to do it for adults, uh, which is their your grandma, grandfather, so called. So education advisory service. So, um, they ex they last time used to focus more on toddlers or more on uh daycare or this thing. Then they acquired one company that's uh more towards college uh, advisory. That's how they got this company. Okay, so they are full service center in detail. So one is cost plus paid by employer and another is profit loss. Basically, it's run like a childcare center like normal. Okay, so this is the price range. Uh, okay. Can see that the revenue per center is average between 1.5 to 2 million and Europe average between uh, 1 million like that. Okay, uh, right now they have more than 1,000 over clients, uh, company clients. Uh, so they, according to the annual report, their retention rate is 94%. So it's quite strong. So as you can see, the they are already dominated by full the service center based childcare. So their client industry range from this uh eight industries, eight seven to eight industries. Okay. Um so their geographic revenue is more towards North America. They are they are expanding slow uh, expanding slowly. Okay. So for their development, actually they every year, almost every year they acquired uh, a lot of companies like later Panya will show you before this year's 2015 to from 2013 to 2015 also got acquired. So their management strategy, almost every year their annual report report the same thing. So grow their client uh, such the sustain annual price which is increasing the price of the uh, program a bit bit by bit lah. okay uh and usually what i only see is they keep acquiring acquiring uh companies okay this is uh, already concept built to last stage i would say um why do i think business can double not sure okay as I highlighted before, more steady company, uh, only tries to maintain their sales or acquiring more companies for growth. So, chairman always talk the same strategy since, uh, since he resigned, since the founder resigned. So basically, uh, before I go to that, okay, corporate structure basically a lot of. Uh, group of nurseries centers all under them is too many so their shareholding structure is basically most of them owned by the groups investment groups so all directors and nominees only own two percent of shares okay so our key management our executive chairman is the founder uh, of this company sorry not founder the ceo from 2002 to 2018 where their growth phase so uh he resigned, he retired during 2018. So uh, he passed it on to this guy called uh, Stephen Kramer. So he was the one that founded the uh, college service company. So he took over uh, the position as CEO. And yep, this is the, this is what I said, the acquisition of college coach. Okay. So remuneration structure, this is basically it. I'll pass to Hanya to talk about the valuation and industry.
Okay, okay. Uh, my turn, is it? Yeah. Let me share. Okay, so I share my screen already. Um, so I'll give you a quick overview of the financial of the company, financial resilience. Resiliency. Okay, so over here you can see that uh, the company actually IPO in 2013. So actually not very long actually, six years. And then uh, you can see there's some discrepancy in the earnings per share. If you base on this slide alone, uh, then uh, there's actually some adjustments. Uh, oh wait. The reason being is because uh, they have this one off, uh, this one. They call it loss on, sorry. They released in 2013. What happened? Oh, okay, interesting. I didn't know. Um, why? Uh? Okay. And then uh, they have this thing called loss of extinguishment of debt. So actually, I'm not really sure uh, what is it, but it's actually a very big amount. So if you actually adjust it, uh, you adjust it back to the amount, you can get this adjusted earnings per share, which is about here, which is not so drastic. This one is quite drastic. So along the years, uh, it's growing at a, uh, some years is very fast. Some year is like normal. So, okay. So let me see. Let me see anything else to highlight. And then you can see over here, the debt is increasing. Uh, Google intangible also increasing because based on the, uh, the acquisitions that they have. Uh, let me see so what uh yeah that's all okay come let's go to the next one so segmented revenue so basically over 70 to 80 percent of the revenue come from the the childcare so childcare is still their main uh rice bowl and then after that they got back up okay okay uh the one that's growing okay later later you can see the growth rate uh, geographically, more than eighty, uh, about eighty percent is also from North America, so they're actually very reliant on North America. Uh, I don't know. Just now you say they acquire a lot, right? They keep on acquiring, acquiring so I don't know. Okay, like, like I cannot see until what they're acquiring as well. So, uh, common size structure. Uh, majority of their their cost is on the COGS, and then uh, and then follow, and then they don't give any dividend uh, at uh, as of till date. Until 2019, they didn't give any dividend. Mm. Most of their balance sheet composition uh, is made out of that one, actually. So, and also intangible asset. So it's not very pretty. Uh. Okay. Okay. So current ratio, not much. It's because uh, most of their money is used to for... Uh, <laughs> later I show you, most of their money, they used to uh, high KVX spending. Okay. Then uh, net debt to the NTA also, they don't even bother to... Reduce the debt. I mean, until recently, lah. Recently, they start to reduce, but not a lot. Uh, slowly. Uh, cash conversion cycle negative, which is a good thing. And then, uh, because people pay, yeah, the client have to pay, ma. Pay for their service. And then intangible is very high, lah. Like just now we said, lah. So that's that. Um, okay. Before we come to this, shift it down. Okay. So on 2013, you can see that you can see uh, on the side on yourself that uh, this one we took off from the annual report one. So from 2013, it has a record of goodwill of 37 million. And then this, uh, they've been acquiring a lot of companies. Um, I think if you really want to dig deep, then need to what uh, need to really pull out Excel spreadsheet and then and then really record see what they're doing with the the company itself because they don't break down right. So they acquire and then they record goodwill uh, 11 million, 31 million. Every year, lah. Every basically every year, lah. Every year, they <laughs> every year they are spending shareholders' money, and then you go and acquire companies, lah. So, um, what do I want to say? Okay, so we come here a little bit. So this is one of the, uh, by Business Wire one. Yeah. So this one is their recent quarter, the latest quarter, which is quarter two. The result, ah, uh, you see, ah, uh, it's a revenue growth range of about ten percent. Okay. Net income about 2.98. Okay, I take the highest range uh, 2.98. Uh. Okay. So so um 
in terms of okay, I was looking at this in terms of acquisition, uh, same thing. You see their habit of uh, twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen, six months ended. They are also acquiring about about there lah. That means I think they could quota on uh, how much they want to spend, and they will just spend uh. And then only recently they are starting to pay back their debt, hence the uh, financing activity also reducing. Hmm. Okay, so hence you can see over here. Uh, let's go back. Just now you see the profit is about uh nine ten percent. I've done it in uh I've done it in my Excel, so it's about uh nine ten percent this year, and then based on the valuation right now, based on the valuation right now, let's take a look at the valuation. Um, you take you look at the adjusted P ratio, which is this one is about sixty uh, okay, which is about there uh. If you Google it, this is about. I think Google used trading twelve months, so it's fifty over. But the P ratio is quite high, uh. Three more minutes. Yeah, the P ratio is quite high. And then um, one more thing I want to convey is just now uh, this one, Annabelle shared this. So uh, even though it's a bit outdated, but it's kind of true on what they're saying because CapitalCube.com they actually talk about this company um. They have a problem of uh, relative asset inefficiency. That means they have been buying, 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 but it doesn't seem to be doing much. Uh. Uh, and then also, um, the company annual revenue and earnings are uh, change at a slower rate, which is what 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 we we're saying just now. And then also, let me see. Uh, Yeah, I think that's all you know. and also of, of their high debt. Uh. But if you look at here, uh, look at here, I think you can look at my screen, right? This one is the uh, peers that they give. And then uh, actually this one, uh, this Ardu's home care is actually, uh, I think a lot for the old folks one. I checked just now. This one, uh, this guy, uh, Cambium, uh, is already uh, prioritized already. Uh, someone bought already. Uh, left K.com and Bright Horizons. Uh. And then K.com uh, is a... Uh, uh, it's a very small company, lah. It's a very small company, like few hundred million only. So, I think overall, I think overall to me, I think uh, choose another company better, lah. <laughs> yeah, that, that that that's my take, lah. Huh? <coughs> the can you go back to the website just now? <clears throat> this one, this one. No, the other one. This one? Mm. So this business wire is a Berkshire Hathaway company. Yeah. And this business wire does what? Uh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just uh, something not relating to the company itself. Uh. I got more than two. Out of the reach already. My, uh... This one, uh. well, this 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 Warren Buffett very smart. Uh. Actually, he's very tech savvy, also, right? Yeah. You see, he, this thing dissemin it quite disseminate all the press release and everything, and all the blogs and everything. Isn't it like like automatically filter all the business information to him? I mean, I mean, I mean, he need to study the company anyway, so might as well he form a... Yeah, this thing automatically extract everything out. Lah. Yeah, no, yeah, no. It's subsidiary. Uh. Interesting. Very I have one question, actually. Yes. One very important question. Actually, until now, I still don't understand why it's the real business. <laughs> What's a real business? Uh? <laughs> what, what in, in layman common, uh, just I'm a very stupid person terms. Uh. Hmm. Actually, what are they doing? Uh? I hear childcare, I hear service, I hear a lot of things. And then what's the main business that they're doing? Can you explain in seven words or less? 
So they are they are child care center lah. So they are a child care center. So they are. So they are like. <coughs> so they are like Montessori or this lah, right? I believe. Uh, did they mention uh, in the end report? I believe. Uh, a lot of their business is from the the employer side one, right? So they are a child care center for employee. Employee. Yes, they collaborate with employer lah. So basically, and then they do on-site childcare inside the company itself. Hmm. Hmm. Here, ma. On-site childcare. Okay. So, but they also also have their own school. Got not. It's a, it's it's a tuition program, not not school. I think. So they do everything, lah. <laughs> okay. Mm. How many? Wait a wait a wait a. How what is their market cap already? Ah. Nine point six billion. Okay, lah. Mid mid luck, uh, almost mid luck, last cap. Yeah, but to be honest, the reason why I chose this company is because you see the share price so nice, man. Huh? See, wow. See? <laughs> yeah, not not like this one. That one got one middle finger and here, and then, and then coming up. The middle finger one more exciting. <laughs> 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 That was a long middle finger, though. I said. Richard said already ten x. Oh. Okay. Any further questions for this company? Wait a, wait a. Okay. No question. We move on first, ah. Huh? Why this round all no question man? Also quiet man. Hey, so suddenly you talk about that, ah? I suddenly recall this this thing, eh. You see, for the middle finger business, ah, hey, the <laughs> it has already <laughs> such a large <laughs> clientele, right? And then they are like they understand the client so good already, right? Then if let's say there's a new wave that come, ah. Why immediately they have a uh, 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 entire list of clientele that they can introduce it to, so the second middle finger will appear. <laughs> <laughs> true or not? Two middle finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true or not? Oh uh, my god. Because <laughs> you already know your customer, what? Right? Then if you let's say like, oh, I don't know whatever. Last time the new thing came out, what? Bitcoin lah, this lah, that lah. And then in the future got. Uh, uh so called next big idea. Uh, the second middle finger will appear. Uh, that is your your current current company, right? You're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, I'm I'm saying the company that I'm uh studying la. Yeah, la, yeah, la, yeah, magic. La. yeah. That's why it's called magic, man. <laughs> <laughs> but just now, just now, what what you say, ah? Uh? uh, whether you got any catalyst? Just now, what? Honke was answering, is it? Car no, <coughs> currently they don't have any real, real catalyst. It's just uh, continue <laughs> to leverage on existing uh, clientele. They are go deeper. Then after that, they continue to acquire new uh, subsidiaries. Oh, like that. New technical what, what's, yeah. their, what's their operating leverage? Uh? Their fixed, fixed cost is how? Honke. Uh? Yes. Majority is fixed cost, is it? Or variable cost? Uh, uh, software or software versus fixed cost, maybe. 
most of the fixed costs. Then actually, I would say, 就是说，就是说，哈 ，year on year， 哈 ，margin 是一直是上啊。margin 其实没有上。Yeah. That's a very, very quite weird thing. No, I think, uh, the whatever you're seeing right now is it after the M and A or not? Because in nine years, eh, in how many? Ah, ten years they have nine M and A. Is oh, is it because there are some subsidiaries where after they、mm-hmm. build they after they acquire right, then they need to do this post merger integration. That's why there's there's a period of time where the cost is higher. Maybe. <coughs> Can find out lah on your second second follow up. This this is the yeah. But but gross profit right is external. I mean uh, if there is this uh integration, it would affect mainly on EBIT lah. Yeah. No. Gross profit is like you sell to customer, then eventually you decide to give some discount, then it leads to the lower lower GPM lah. 通常你 GPM 高的话，就是说你的 fixed cost 低咯。Uh, AVC, AVC, you just variable, the ma. I think Richard was calling Adrian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard also. Ah,、uh, Adrian.、Mm. Both company you also give up, ah. Ah. I actually how to say ah.、Uh, um. Not the don't have the so. Don't have the kick yet. No, no company. No kick ah, just that lor. Why, why you more and more talk like me ah? You see, you see, you see, you see. Ah, ah, this one now no kick ah, what ah? So now every time we study, study what ah? The INS ah, is it very kick one eh? Kick ah, what ah? We just say no feel ma. He must use different word. If not copy you, ma. <laughs> hey, right. Hey, Richard, you got company or not? Got company, is it? Yes, yes. Okay, lah.、Uh, you you want go first or agent go first? Okay, lah. I go first, lah. Okay, lah. Okay, can see. Yeah, can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Today I'm presenting this company called M O M O. What? Yeah. Find the screen. You know、okay. this company? Uh. Yes. I know. I know. I know. Adrian. I know. Don't need to talk. Hey, since、I、when you become legendary? Legendary become venerable. Yeah, I changed it. Hey, you're very good, ah.、Huh? Read screen,、oh. man. Good. Next good, time, good. next time you Jedi, lah. Jedi. Very attentive. This is my intention. Let's see whether you can read the small things, lah. Okay, so uh, <coughs> I'm not gonna put any picture to scare myself. This is a Chinese company, right? Yes, yes, Chinese company. So I'm gonna keep it very short. Uh, basically, this company. Uh, also, I'm gonna keep it very uncolorful. No, no fancy slides or what. Uh, so this is gonna be this is company basically is a Tinder of China. And is uh, uh attempting to be an all-in-one super app, okay? Uh, if you uh if you guys are aware, <clears throat> in China there is already quite a number of so-called super apps ah,、uh, and、uh, obviously the one of the biggest ones is WeChat lah.、No? So their services is uh, they can chat, they can do live stream, they they have mobile game, and then they are expanding to mobile TV, okay. Uh, how they make money? <clears throat>、uh, right at the start, they actually make money from this membership subscription. So you get a VIP account. Then after that, then all this start to follow lah. So two, three, four, and etc. lah. Okay. So this is their main、uh, money making thing now, which is live streaming. Uh, the, on for this company mainly the key indicator is called monthly active users lah. Okay. So I assume for all this kind of uh, uh app based kind of uh chatting kind of uh, software is always about MAU lah. So where the wind is blowing? Okay. So the power of live streaming. Actually, live streaming this industry uh is a little bit out of my generation, uh technically speaking, but I'm also aware about how it works. So. 
uh, for live streaming, right, at least to me, is actually the benefit is number one, active engagement, and then you can actually target a lot of audience at once. Uh. So here, you can obviously sell, you can sell uh, auction-like things. You can build a fan base, you know. Uh, you can uh, you can watch porn also, obviously. And you can also do coaching and business stuff, like Gary Vee. And uh, what, <coughs> according to the website, live streaming market actually peaked in 2018. I'm not sure whether you guys are aware of or noticed. I remember, I don't know, back a few years ago when suddenly there were a lot of live streaming apps. And then one of them looks a little bit like a panda or some kind of bear one. You know, you guys know what's the name of the app? Ah? Or you guys heard of it before? No. No, I don't know. No, I cannot ask you too. Uh, uh, maybe like Huan Yang or Annabelle. <laughs> or maybe Adrian. You guys heard before this stuff? No. Also, no. Oh, I'm out in social media. No, you're, you're all very outdated. Okay. I, I, I use, I mean, I see it downloaded before by the really forgot the name. So, um, <clears throat> I believe actually it's a few years ago. It's not 2018. And then, okay, uh, the dating market in China is also very strong long-term tailwind because number one, uh, the males are more than females. And then, you know, guys, uh, sorry, males in particular, there is the, the hunger to mate. So it definitely drives demand. Uh, number two, due to internet era, more Chinese individuals are turning into uh, so-called nerds, uh, geeks, or otaku, or whatever names. And probably slowly, eventually, they will forget how to uh, interact with people of the opposite gender. Uh, number three, strawberry generation. So they are very, very pampered, and then they are they more often than not are highly dependent on a web or app for whatever that they want to do. And then lastly, China will eventually become like Japan with becoming a developed nation with dropping reproduction rates. So this so-called dating tailwind will expire in a few 10 to 20 years now. So in terms of the wind strength, okay, uh, from a live streaming perspective, this company is one of the weakest in China. Okay, weakest. You have to see this word weakest because of the number of MAU and popularity and everything. From a dating app perspective, they are actually deemed as a hookup app rather than a so called searching for soulmate app. But that doesn't mean people won't use them. Okay. Uh, however, they won't be able to stay popular as a family-friendly app, for example, like WeChat. So that that means there is also a limit to their scaling. Okay, so if you can see here, 2018, 16 million users. 16 million users over 1.3 billion in China, right? It's very, very small percentage. So it's very tiny. Uh, I feel this can be a lot of risk. So features, number one, too easy to copy. Many features are already found across other platforms and apps. Uh, number two, it's also actually very highly dependent on the live stream revenue. <coughs> if the top live streamers get bored or they actually people convert them to other platforms or headhunt to other platforms, then obviously their sales will drop a lot very suddenly. Uh, what they do actually is to have uh, exclusive agreements with their top streamers. And, but in this case, they also can and will demand higher and higher fees for maintaining this exclusivity, which means it is actually not sustainable. Uh, this is... Uh, <clears throat> For a layman or very simple explanation, in real life, what is happening in Hollywood is like how, for example, people like Tom Cruise, 
when uh, you guys know Tom Cruise, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This one is Hong Kong. So, uh, you know, when, when he charged all those uh, movies, uh, I mean, like, like, act, and then his fees are uh, wow, really sky high. One it can be a few hundred million, example, uh, uh, just for one movie alone. So, the in that last time the uh, season of um, movie, right, the actors are the ones that command a lot of money. One that's why everybody wants to be actor in Hollywood. Man. Then, when uh, you know the Marvel franchise come in 10 about 10 plus years ago, then their strategy change of uh. Uh, what they call actors are just uh, like employees only and then they can kick uh, they can change anytime and whatever they do maybe their agreements they sign is like you are nothing but an employee la. <clears throat> so what's happening in the movie industry there is not happening in the live stream industry apparently in our case here in this company because they are dependent on all these uh, uh, top streamers la. okay so and number the another thing is they have a sales cut somehow. So sales cut here means uh, every time more people, more sales, more revenue, it also will equals to more cost lah. So yeah, the payouts. So actually, um, I don't know lah. Next, still deem as a dating as a service platform since now everything also as a service one. Um, <clears throat> They have similar functions like Tinder and Scout. Uh, I don't know whether you guys heard before Scout or, or those me, me, uh, anybody used before. Me, M, M E E T is a little company. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, it's uh, actually it's very similar in, fun in terms of functions, but uh, in a very communism kind of country and world, they will definitely have uh, risk in regulatory and also uh, because of the yeah, reputation as a hookup app also you see the government and as well as the citizens will not want to really uh, use this app on a day-to-day -day basis lah. okay so a few questions to them uh, how do they intend to ultimately beat the WeChat super app, which already have 900 over million users. They only have less than 900 million over monthly active users. This one only have 16 million. Uh, can they eventually sell this company or are they allowed space to sustain in their mini niche? I don't know. Need to find out. <clears throat> and then also definitely need to do Scatterbutt. How popular is it with uh, China users? I need to actually talk to my cousin. Uh, yet to do so. Uh, can they slowly increase their uh, price in their various monetization channels? I'm doubtful. Uh, do they still have space in their niche market to scale? Question mark. Is there a sector tailwind or headwind blowing the direction? Uh, how sticky are their user retention, which is the you know the streamers and everything? Uh, before I show to this video part. You guys, uh, you guys know what is TikTok, right? Yes. Yes, yes. You guys. Terry should know. Uh. How Terry know? Uh? Wow, Terry, how come you know? Uh? Okay, <laughs> you guys used before TikTok, right? No, I thought it's uh, a China thing. It's a China thing, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, China thing. Yeah. Uh, so I assume nobody here actually used TikTok before, uh, right? Even though you guys no. know, but okay, never mind. Uh, so later I'll click on this video. Uh, so this one, even though uh, Adrian shared in the group, I already cut earlier in these slides already actually. So you see there is uh, the importance of a social social media or daily millennial lives, whereby now the power of influencers or you want to say live streamers and everything is actually able to command presence and uh, redirect governments to even do certain things. Lah. So, uh, uh, which I'm trying to say is, uh, social media is now somewhat, uh, very what's the word? Uh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, so summary. Uh, buying this company means you are trying to write on the China middle come uh trend, and also trying to write on the mobile tech China boom trend. 
Uh, but you're probably investing in a weak mode company with a constant fear of Chinese regulators uh, trying to hammer you, attempting to be a super app, but then there are too many contenders in the space. But if, I feel like if you want to be a successful super app, uh, you need to actually be one of the top three lah, in the country. <clears throat> and then you need to dig from people in China. I, I mean, I need to dig from people in China who are popular super apps. And a fair chance of continued growth, but unsure of the exponential rate. Okay, that's it for my side. You guys want to watch video first or listen to Terry's uh, Terry part? Yeah. Richard, Richard. Yes. Why, why are you just coming? Uh? Were you inspired by something? Uh? Uh, Terry chose one. Oh, okay. Uh, Terry, can you answer? Uh, I think, okay, one of the mostly uh, surprise to me that when I choose this company, I was solely look on the metric itself. So wait, I wait, wait, wait. Hello? Terry, yes? Terry do you use it when you went to China? What? <laughs> do you use it when you went to China last round? Uh? No, I didn't. You sure? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, no need one. Uh, WeChat also can. Uh. In any case, <laughs> we're running short on time. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, any... Hey, you sure you want to want to show the video? No, 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 no. I don't want to waste time. Okay, go. Okay, can see my slide, right? Yes. Uh, no. Okay. No. No, cannot. No. Okay, <coughs> now can maybe. All right. Allow okay. It. First of all, when I uh, see the structure of this company, uh, uh, there is some question raised in my mind. Uh. Of course, there are a lot of, uh, they start their company starting from Beijing. But the problem is when the, the moment they are going to prepare themselves to be listed over the US, uh, they started to establish the company throughout Cayman Island. Um, a lot of questions. Uh. I mean, when I, when I think- Are you very biased against Cayman company? Uh? What? You're very biased against Cayman Company. Yeah, it's not really, uh, not really, uh, but it's just that, uh, you know, I mean, when they go to the Cayman, there are a lot of things that can be done. Uh. Like what? I don't know. I, I, I just have a uh, kind of sense <laughs> of that. <laughs> yeah, the same, uh, if not, you say a lot of things, then what? What was the thing you want to say? Okay, uh, then why would they want we talk offline? Oh. <laughs> talk offline, okay. 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 Okay, so move on. There are a lot of subsidiaries throughout this. Uh, so I, I guess uh, there's a bit of a lot of office throughout, throughout the region. And um, okay, region wise, uh, shareholders, nothing to talk about it. And if you're talking about shareholding itself, the CEO itself, which is the Yang Tang, he, he is the one who can command over this company because uh, together only his alone voting power is already more than 50%. So mean to say, whatever he, he want to do, then you just command over the company, then the company will do whatever okay. he said. Uh, simple. Mm. Okay. Share holding 44.6%. The CEO is still holding a very large portion in terms of share. Uh, I'll say that. Okay. <coughs> so no reason that data. And okay. There are basically seven board of directors together with their three senior management because they only listed three i guess these three uh, is quite important uh. two of them is only over 30s and one of them is uh, 55 which is uh, very typical kind of the cfo uh, but another two is still very young okay all right this guy um look at okay. his face <laughs> uh, it, it give me a sense that where this guy is uh, don't really give a shit about it uh. <laughs> this came out from clubbing, lah. Uh. I don't know. He, That's he, why he, he built hookup app, lah. Uh. <laughs> this one, this one is, is like it can't. It look as like face you have no idea. Uh. He can he can take picture just like that. Uh. Normally people try to smile and be polite. Oh la, wait, Terry, this is your favorite Google one, is it? What? Google one, is it? This this photo. No, this one is take from the Forbes one, uh, Forbes website. Hmm. Oh, his own website, ah. Uh. No, no, it's on website, of course. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, this is not his uh, official image, but somehow I, I cannot, somehow I don't know whether they want to be low profile or what, because I cannot <coughs> file their official picture, corporate picture. This is picture. official image, lah. This is, uh, I, this is the yeah, picture. This is, uh, image, uh, this, this is the picture taken during the interview, lah. 
He's like he's like uh, Mark Zuckerberg also wear this type of turtle neck kind of thing, ma. Yeah. Yes, it's trend. It's trend. Okay, next, okay. next. Okay. All right. So another core founder is uh these two, I, I saw that the there are two is play very important role in this company uh, but somehow they are just over thirties, right? So um. Both of them comes coming from the either one or engineer, and the one is software engineer. Lah. So no much to talk about that. Okay. 4.27% in terms of remuneration, I think it's okay. But if you are talking about just uh salary alone, uh, the top three executive director take quite an amount of money. Uh. Okay, all right. Okay, so I will each of them actually take more than it's equally uh, it's about five to six million USD, uh, just one person alone. Okay, uh, never mind. This one, uh, Daniel, remind me to talk about this point uh, later. Okay. okay, right. Okay, uh, they don't have a fixed po dividend policy, and until they, they only distribute one special policy, uh, during fiscal year of 2018. That's all. And employee breakdown, it seems that their staff is continuously uh, growing. Okay, most of them. Uh, sitting in headquarter which is Beijing itself, almost two k of people, but they said they said uh, out of these two k uh, more than half of them is doing R and D, so, uh, it raised my concern where what kind of these people are doing in terms of R and D uh, are are they really need that kind of many programmers or the people developing the software just one k people alone, trying to call you on the app lah. But they, but they, but they claim themselves as R and D, you know, instead of customer service, sell as marketing, you know. No, they they need to call Louis, man. Need to test whether the call Louis successful or not, man. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. This is what you say. Yeah, I don't know. Market cap, What? What is that? Market. Market cap, ah. Uh, market cap is uh, see ah. Hey, oh no, let me see. Uh. Hey, Richard, do, do, do you have uh, have any record regarding this market cap? Uh? You just open Google, lah. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> this one also need me to pick. Uh. 7.5 billion. Uh, you see people face like that, uh, talk, 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 uh, 7.5 billion. Uh. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, okay. If you're talking about metrics, uh, I would say um, this company is growing is uh, in fact just based on the number alone uh, is really growing very fast okay the accumulate of the cash very fast is just few years of times but you can see that as they are growing uh, they are all this metric in terms of ratio gpm opm sga ngm ccc it start to be shrinking across the year slowly and i found that based on the ccc alone uh, because we want to see whether how fast uh, this guy uh, can collect the cash from the in the store but they're also very fast to pay in terms of so-called this uh, popular broadcaster and also talent agency uh. the, mm. the cycle is become shorter okay mm. and, and okay just to let you know this i didn't know about this until i saw the annual report and also the news they are buying over so-called uh, this uh tan tan company uh. yep just last year just buying this company or not already stand spend them around uh over four thousand million Which just last year billion. yeah four billion just one tanan just one one company alone four billion already and okay, there is two more minutes wrap up okay all right and if you're talking about just comparing against the two other one, I didn't compare about the scout one or the mid one, but I compare against the YY Incorporate and also the Match Group. Match Group is the parent company of Tinder and also the Match.com. Okay. Uh, if you're just looking at the metric itself, Momo is still quite okay. I would say that. That's it from my side. Okay, any question? Momo quite okay. No, I'm talking about just comparing with the other companies who are listed. You and, should and compare think, with uh, of offer you, should, with that, uh. you should compare with Meet Me. Meet Me, uh. mm. okay. Meet Me is is uh in terms of app comparison, they are really similar. Meet Me, it's a snack, is it? 
n e e t m e m o m e I thought you said Momo Mimi, eh? Then Baba. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, then you have to find own the scout one, right? Yes, yeah, they're not, yeah. not on the scout. But but in my in my own image, I didn't have a very clear uh impression about the scout. So I'm not sure how the scout is going. Scout is basically a hookup app, lah. Oh, I see. Nothing else. So according to Annabelle and Adrian, who hey, tried it Eric. before. Very. It seems like uh, this Tantan app is very popular. La. Is it? Yes. Maybe Terry, you can try register both account. See which, see which one you can hold, hold up. I think you go register, la, Terry. But, but to be honest, uh, I, I very often saw this kind of so called Tantan video uh, over my Facebook page. And until to the, to the, to the state that oh. I, when I, every, every, time, every time I saw this, but I just I just keep it. That's so you know, you you know what Facebook is trying to tell you lah, right? Hey, uh, what? Uh, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? Uh, this one right? The, their revenue is like one one billion, ma, right? One point something billion, right? Two billion last year. Two billion lah. It's all from uh. It's all from what ah? Mainland China. Yeah yeah yeah. Advertising, transactional. It's like the app you want to boost your profile, you pay money to them. Uh. One of them is, is like what uh, we just mentioned about the, the, the so called VIP subscription fees. Uh. One uh -huh. of them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Another oh. one is, yeah. The main one? The main one? Because it's quite strange, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't break down so details about main, uh, main, main contributor to their revenue la. or live VIP stream. Ah, or reoccurring live stream. Ah. Live stream. Huh? Live stream live need stream. to pay Of course. Live stream, can, you can buy the virtual item. Ah, huh? the virtual item one. Ah? Ay, yo, means how ah, you really know this generation. Ah, you you ah, you Wait, wait, you know, 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 Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then in the Facebook Live, you can like give a like, all this type of thing, right? Then you will like uh, pop up uh, on the person's screen, uh, right? Oh, sure. then people pay money to pay money to them, right? Is it to support them, is it? Yes, something like that. Like or maybe like, they buy like a like gamer a donation type of thing, lah. Like don't don't say donation, <laughs> lah. Say uh. say virtual item, lah. Donation it sounds like a dirty word, lah. Oh, okay. So, so, no, no, so, no, no, the donation itself is not the D. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Come on. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so basically, if you want to support this uh, pretty, pretty girl doing live stream one, then you want to buy something. Then after that, then the the live streamer will maybe say, oh, maybe Huan Yang, oh, thank you for buying for me, something like that, lah. Understand? All right. Sure. Uh, they get the transactional fee, la. yes, mm. yes, can, can, can. So you're buying, buying nothing, or you're buying air, or actually, that's why it's actually very profitable. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, just now regarding the CEO remuneration, all this, right? Uh, I want to say, uh, okay, those that. <laughs> Those that never meet me before when I was in Singapore back, back a few days ago, I actually met my cousin in a trip down to Johor. So my cousin is also staying in uh, China. And uh, what he is sharing, basically he is saying all those so-called CEOs uh, nowadays in China uh, or, or I mean those uh, rich fellas, uh, this type of remuneration is very common, very normal. 
So uh, when Terry comment, you comment about the remuneration, you feel that it's quite high in all this, right? In China, across the whole country, uh, you can expect just salary alone, excluding bonus, excluding all the claims, and everything, right? It's around few hundred thousand really, right? Per month. Yeah, per month. Mm. Okay. Actually, actually, um, when you analyze Chinese, right, there's a big difference in culture between Chinese and Western one, because yes, yes, I think yesterday, uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday, I went, I went to the event. A short event, like two three hours, is 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 introducing the business culture in China. One, it's totally a, it's a it's a big crash between Chinese and Western one. So when you analyze the company, right, it's it's also different one. When you look the way you look at Western company, is different with is different with the way you, you need to view in China one. Okay. I think agent, agent's company, then we can conclude. Okay. okay. Agent design, quick one or long one? Uh, consider quick. Uh. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> can everyone see my screen? Uh? Yes. Okay. Okay. Actually, it's, uh, it's the same industry, Paycom uh, competitor. Actually, this one is uh, actually there is a hype in all the human capital management software in back back in two thousand five two thousand six. That uh, that's when all the I think institutional investors started to uh pump in pump in uh fund into this uh this industry. So basically, I think you when you when you cross over like the whole industry in human capital management, like it's quite uh quite hype lah. I mean, it's quite multi bagger return in. Uh, during two one five until now, so this is the whole in whole different the whole industry, but all the different set niche player. So it's far, Paycom. but yes, it's Paycom, uh. Paycom, Paycom. No Paycom, uh. <laughs> uh, Paycom is still not uh really in in the, it's still not the not not the big compared to all this. Are you serious? Okay, very very cool. Okay, and then I think later you will see you pay is still relatively small player. But but <laughs> Sage wall, Sage is big player. Where? Yeah. The bottom left time and attendance. Oh, you know, it's, because uh, you you have to know pay is actually everywhere. It's not only in time and attendance. Uh. Oh, it's okay. a it's an integrated software. Yeah, so it should be on on, on top there the market consolidator one Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. But uh, but when I read the all the industry article, right? Actually, most of them quite high and then quite some of the player even afraid of work day. I I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure why they are quite afraid of work day. Is the is the work day really is the is the disruptor? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Next. Okay. This is a thesis. Uh, I don't, I don't, I want to put in short is actually I repeat already. So, uh, so this company I, I going on is the formula is called paycheck. Why I choose this, right? Because after the, after the paycom, uh, means the, paycheck because, up. because, uh, how to say, uh, uh, the most near to paycom business, right? Is, uh, yeah. is paycheck. Ah. <laughs> Next one is pay money. <laughs> okay. So I, okay. I don't want, okay. Okay. So currently it's a uh, 30 billion. Uh, it's a uh, considered mid large cap already. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mm, this one is similar business model to Paycom, human capital management solution for payroll benefit human resource is an, an EUI okay, insurance right, right. service. Between them and Paycom. Actually, this one I will explain between uh, in, in bottom. Okay. So this company currently this company has six hundred and seventy thousand clients. Actually, this this company uh differentiate between Paycom right, uh there is a this company has penetrated into a PEO PEO segment. PEO is so called professional employer organization, meaning the uh the client outsourced to the human resource to how to say it. Actually, PEO is a system whereby the employer still on the still on his employee. 
so this yeah. so tar this company target client is small only small to medium size client located throughout US and Euro. So you if you say paycom on is it's still only in US, this company already in US and Euro. So and also the service agreement is not really locked in lock in period. They are they can termi terminate by any time upon relatively short notice. So this company have a client retention rate of over 82 percent up to now. So the revenue model is similar to this uh, Paycom also also choose to have our service team handle everything. Even uh, out, either they want to outsource or or they only want to subscribe the service uh, and, the, and then do it in house. Uh. So it's uh, also cloud based software as a service solution. So service are about all similar to Paycom uh, uh, other than the PO service and the insurance service. Okay, then sales and marketing is also using like sales team and direct sales force. And another thing is this company uh, has a long standing partnership with the CSCIPA, meaning the all the certified public accountant uh, have a long standing partnership with them. So this come this certified public accountant can get referral to all, whenever they went into the become the CFO or financial control of a company. So operating metrics, 90% come from the service revenue. So they are also similar to Paycom. They have an interest on fund health for client where their interest, only interest income, not the fund. fund uh, interest income is up to latest is 80, 80 million interest around. So where, where Paycom is still relatively, still a more really small sum. Uh, I think not even 10 million paid for Paycom. So next. Uh, this one is the service revenue, the, the breakdown of service revenue. Just, this one is the service and interest. Right? So this one is the breakdown in service revenue. So as you can see, actually the, the current growing is the PO and insurance service. The management solution is already quite uh, stagnant, uh, slow, slow, really slow growth already. Right? So business highlight management solution revenue only increased 4%, and then PO and insurance service revenue increased 46%. And then because of the, the acquisition of the OSS, is F2 is F2 exclude this OSS acquisition, the revenue only increased ninety percent. The organic growth is ninety percent. In organic, all all together is forty six percent. So interest on fund increased twenty seven percent. So dividend is actually eighty percent pay out ratio. So it's a quite a maturity company. Uh, so the current client is 670,000 compared to last year, it's only 650,000 client. In, still increased 20,000 20, client, uh, partly because I think it's the acquisition. Uh. So number of client pays, okay, this one is from 600 to 670k until, until this year for the last five years. So HR product offering, uh, you can see the their growth rate is very high, high in PO and insurance services. Uh. So the new offering, this one is the upcoming uh, enhancement in, into the platform. Also, they have a uh, integrated web-based learning management system. I think I think other thing is like more more like a retirement focused product, and also the general ledger service and the QuickBooks online. Uh, I think similar to Paycom. Uh. So in, this one is the investment cash portfolio, meaning the their floating they earn on the floating. So they own on 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 the floating right. Like, uh, like I say that's why it's eighty million, uh, eighty million yield on the yield on the principal, right? It's actually allow I think two point one percent the interest income because they majority invest in only the municipal government bond, which is a uh, compared to risk free bond, there is a higher risk, but not the but still backed by government. Uh. Pay common how many percent? Uh? Pay common also allow one two percent. Yeah. Okay. So this one is just like I said, they, they recently acquired this company. Right? So the key management, all these are key management, but I only, but I only, put, but I only will tell you the one, the, the key the key person, right? which is the CEO. Right? So you can see the CEO has a very has a really nice mustang. Yeah, nice suit, wearing uh, Apple Watch. Yeah, so you, actually this, 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 this is the guy, um, uh, how to say uh, they, they, this guy drove the company 10 bagger. Uh, 
and then responsible for all the operation before this he because he's become the ceo he, he is also is a vice president of the operation in the company uh, meaning he he can't get ladder up on uh, not not the hiring from outside uh, this ceo so mm. his breakdown is actually in a bachelor degree in accounting mm. but uh, but but he's uh oh he's um <laughs> uh resume right is more or more into re human resource in instead of the accounting and also he is also one of the member in upstate new york regional advisory board for the federal reserve bank of new york so he has, has a connection to the federal reserve right? and also mm -hmm. he also advisory team for a leading private equity investment firm based in chicago you see the mustache like that already know successful already yeah. okay mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. structure, you, you can see other than uh, all the farm and sugar, actually, the, the first one you see the first one, the place, uh, Gori Sino is, is actually the founder of the company. This one is, is, is still the hiring, it's not the founder. This one only the founder. The founder is still in the company as a chairman. This one is CEO, but the founder is still in return in the company is a, as a chairman. So up to here up to here financial performance uh actually you can see the profitability is uh slow and steady la. I, I, I wouldn't want to say slow down but it's a slow and steady but um this company um, i think is also quite well managed in terms of capital allocation because uh they are you if you can see whenever they uh acquire acquisition uh, meaning like like you see the good the good way and tangible asset right Whenever they acquire the inter the intangible has increased, right? Then the actually the net tangible asset, meaning the equity also following increase, meaning the company really earn money when they acquire the acquisition. So and and then this company has no uh no debt borrowing until latest year. In 2019, they they issue a long term bond, 800 million actually used for acquisition one. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a quite a cash cash rich company, also very high free cash flow. The, mm. and uh and and the hour is also very high la. okay la. It's, uh, it's a very nice okay yeah, it, it's in terms of pair comparison if you want to look at here i compare with uh, actually quite a few company la, like what they SP or Rocco also in here but i but you don't need to see all this you can see it yourself when you when you start off from the drive la. i will i will i will quit all this and then this one is only the uh, really really is in charge of the more to work human capital and payroll one so you can see uh the, the right hand side the the most right one is paycom then the the third one is the paycheck uh. then the first two first one is ultimate then the second one i forgot what is the name of it i think pay velocity or something like this <coughs> so you can see everything is in top of uh everything right if, if you compare right you, you can see what although the paycheck has the nice probability right but payco paycom is still in the growing stretch right? everything is, is is still in growing stretch paycom yep. so in also last but not least like like you say what is the difference between paycom right paycom doesn't have a PO insurance service because paycom is hiring is still in aso and sas so number of client for paycheck is 670,000 versus currently paycom only have 23,000 still a long way to go i think if paycom there is this powerful la. so client health mm. obligation for paycheck is holding four billion but paycom only uh close to one billion so you you say paycom right is a is a more more of a really growth stretch growth stretch for paycom and starting to maturity stage for paycheck so paycom still can grow for abundant expansion in client and number of employee and five obligation while paycheck starting to expand wow we are in organic already. We are actually of OS and the lesser group in recent year. So this is the this is the paycheck. This is why the in the maturity search you can see the performing so and city. So I, I finished my already. Any question? Okay. Yes, I have a question. <coughs> Do you uh, research on any user feedback on the uh, uh, company products? Uh? Which one you you mean take home paycheck? Paycheck, I so far I didn't. Because right now the way you present, right? You are you aware of uh, Malaysia got the software called UBS? Uh? The accounting software. 
I think your girlfriend know lah, accounting. Yeah. Okay. No? Why? I, okay, I, so I, I heard of it. All right. So this UBS, right, the way that they market, right, is similar to this company whereby the uh, most important point is they link to this uh, the, the accounting association. So, uh, okay. Uh, whereby people come in, then after that, they finish study the accounting, then wow, they will be recommended to use this software or maybe inside the uni already start to use this software. Mm. So uh, uh, apparently they are similar, which uh, actually UBS is also acquired by Stage. That's why I'm talking about Stage. Uh, but the problem is this method that they focus on means their, their actual product is quite like shit. Lah. Okay. So um, whether you you got actually study uh, whether users feedback on this company's products is okay or not. Then, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's for my question. Actually, yeah, if, you, if you if you mean, I, I mean, still favor in Paycom compared to Paycheck. I mean, if you just look at the share price, right, and I just let me share my screen. If you just look at share price, it's very easy to see that. Uh, <clears throat> if you look at Paycom, twenty fourteen to twenty nineteen is hundred percent. Mm. And then, uh, obviously, look at market cap thirty billion uh. PE don't need to see that. Okay. Mm. 2014 to 2019 for Paycom is 13, 13 bagger. Eh? What to compare? Mm. 100% and 13 and 13,000%. Eh? Hey, 1,300%. But yeah. then the market cap is 14 billion. Eh? <coughs> mm. uh, uh, so, and then, oh yeah, la, if you see the P ratio, right, uh, actually the market is pricing a very high premium on Paycom already. La. Yeah. It's good company, you know? So yeah. You mm. Okay. So, any more questions from the rest? No, I don't know. No further questions. Nope, no more. Hold down. Honk it. <clears throat> so, uh, Hong Yang, are you there? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you buy Paycom last round? <laughs> Paycom, uh? no. Uh. Yeah. No, uh, didn't buy. Uh. I thought you say you want to queue. I say I want to queue when the price is right. Uh. Let me see. Uh. Oh, what is the price is right? Uh? 